TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli fighter jets struck launch sites and infrastructure in Lebanon overnight, from which rockets were fired toward the civilian communities of northern Israel a day prior. The United States pledges an additional 100 million US dollars for Lebanon, raising its annual humanitarian aid for the country to 560 million in total. The European Union's political director joins with dignitaries from Venezuela, North Korea, Syria and the Islamist Hamas at the inauguration of the new Iranian government and President Ibrahim Raisi. Israeli fighter jets struck launching sites and infrastructure in Lebanon overnight, from which rockets were fired toward the civilian communities of northern Israel. The IDF spokesperson's unit stated that the targets in question included the locations from which rockets were launched yesterday, in addition to a target from which rockets have been launched in the past. <laughs> رجع بعد شي دقيقتين كمان انفجار قوي وصوت طيران يمكن قدرنا انه هيدا قصف طيران ولكن كان القصف كثير مدوي ارتجاجات قويه و... واكيد مخيفه جدا لل... للعيال وللاولاد خاصه انه نحن من 2006 ما سمعنا هيك اصوات سمعنا صوت طيران وقصف رج الدنيا كلياتها فينا وقمنا ناذنين وخايفين وصرنا ناطرين شو بده يصير بهالليل وخفنا على الاولاد وخفنا على حالنا رعب Lebanese President Michel Aoun responded to the Israeli retaliatory strike claiming that it indicates the presence of escalating aggressive intentions that come with the constant threat against Lebanon and its sovereignty, adding further that the retaliatory strike that targeted the locations from which rockets were indiscriminately fired toward Israeli territory is a flagrant and dangerous violation of Security Council Resolution 1701 and a direct threat to security and stability in the south of Lebanon. However, an IDF spokesperson to the Arab world conveyed a clear message to both the president and the rest of the Lebanese leadership. <laughs> تتحمل حكومة لبنان المسؤولية الكاملة عن أي عملية إطلاق نار من داخل أراضيها نحو إسرائيل الحديث أن عدم سيطرة الدولة اللبنانية على نشاتات الجهات الإرهابية الفاعلة بها إسرائيل من جانبها لن تسمح بإطلاق النار من لبنان تجاه سيادتها مهما كان ولكل سبب من الأسباب Meanwhile, at the northern Israeli town of Kiryat Shmona where the rockets exploded in uninhabited lands Firefighting brigades managed to extinguish a number of brush fires, which the incoming projectiles sparked. Turning to Washington, U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price voiced United States condemnation of the indiscriminate rocket fire toward the Jewish state, reiterating the Biden administration's position, granting Israel the right to defend itself against any such attack. When it comes to the rocket attacks, uh, we absolutely condemn the rocket attack, attacks from armed groups uh, based in Lebanon that were fired into Israel. Uh, as the president has said, as Secretary Blinken has said, uh, Israel has the right to defend itself against such attacks. Uh, we will remain engaged with Israeli uh, partners, with uh, Lebanese officials uh, and other partners in the region uh, in an effort to de-escalate the situation. Price went on to highlight that the United States stands in solidarity with the people of Lebanon as they mark the one-year anniversary of the deadly blast that devastated the country's capital, Beirut, and mentioned that the United States, which is the largest donor of humanitarian support for Lebanon, decided to increase its financial aid by $100 million. 
Uh, as you know, the International Support Group for Lebanon uh, met earlier uh, this week on the eve of the anniversary. Uh, those members expressed their solidarity, uh, as do we, with the families of the victims and with those whose lives and livelihoods have been uh, affected by it. In addition to those killed, thousands more uh, were injured uh, and thousands more from there, um, their livelihoods uh, were impacted by this. Uh, the International Support Group uh, did indeed urge authorities to swiftly complete the investigation into the port explosion uh, so that the truth may be known and, and justice may be rendered. The President announced that we are providing nearly $100 million in additional humanitarian assistance for Lebanon. Uh, that is on top of an already significant sum of more than $550 million. I think the exact sum is $560 million. Uh, in humanitarian aid that the United States has provided uh, to the Lebanese people over the past two years. Uh, this humanitarian assistance will benefit vulnerable populations in Lebanon. Uh, that includes those who have been so devastated by the political impasse and the, con uh, the resulting economic crisis, as well as Syrian uh, refugees and the Lebanese communities who are so graciously hosting them. We remain the largest donor of humanitarian support uh, for Lebanon anywhere. Uh, and we have a pre we appreciate it. And uh, all of those other countries that have stepped up, uh, we continue to reiterate our calls for the international community uh, to uh, do the same. Price was further asked about an incident that took place in the Gulf of Oman on Tuesday, in which four commercial vessels abruptly reported loss of command, which usually means that their vessels have been incapacitated all the while, the United Kingdom's Maritime Trade Operations Authority published a warning of non-piracy potential hijack, during which a number of unknown armed assailants boarded the MV Oswald Princess without authorization and ordered its captain to sail to Iran. Nevertheless, several hours later, the assailants reportedly fled the scene. We can confirm uh, that personnel have left the Panama-flagged Asphalt Princess uh, this commercial vessel uh, that was seized yesterday. Uh, we believe that these personnel were Iranian, uh, but we're not in a position to confirm this uh, at this time. Uh, NAVSENT and DOD may have uh, more information uh, for you, but that's what we're able to add at this time. Iran has undertaken uh, a pattern of belligerence in terms of uh, proxy attacks uh, in the region, and of course, these maritime uh, attacks and attempted attacks uh, that have uh, taken place uh, over the course of, uh, really accelerated over the course of several years now. Uh, so without uh, wading too far into the circumstances uh, of this, because um, uh, details are still emerging, uh, we certainly have seen a, a broader pattern. Turning to the Islamic Republic of Iran, where foreign dignitaries from around the world arrived in Tehran for the official state inauguration of the new Iranian government. Alongside the presidents of Iraq and Afghanistan, vice president of Venezuela's Council of Ministers, prime ministers of Armenia and Algeria, and the political bureau chief of the Islamist Hamas organization, among others, the Deputy Secretary General and Political Director of the European Union, Enrique Mora, joined the distinguished list of guests and received an audience with the new Iranian president prior to the government's inauguration. It is worth mentioning that the new Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, remains sanctioned by the United States for human rights abuses, for being directly responsible for condemning to death thousands of Iranian opponents of the regime. It is further important to know that earlier this week on Tuesday, Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei endorsed Raisi for the position of president, after which the latter voiced some of his top priorities for the immediate future. پیام 28 خرداد پیام ضرورت رفع مشکلات اقتصادی و اجتماعی و فرهنگی جامعه بود اینها 
پیامه هایی بود که مردم عزیزمون با رأی خودشون دادند و خواستند از دولت برخواسته از رأی مردم Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the United States in prayer for its salvation and peace alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide in addition to our ongoing prayers of course for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time